So what Sophie did is she took um, some tea bags that we had and cut them open and took the tea out and now we just are using the tea filter paper from the tea bags. Uh, and then we have cheesecloth and we've screwed it on to uh, this bottle here. And into the bottle we, dr we drilled a hole and put kind of like a little nozzle. It's actually like um, a drywall sort of anchor um, but that we can put a tube on that so we can like put it down to a jar. And then we've cut the bottom of the bottle open, so we'll be able to put our different sand filters in there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're going to do that now. Alright, cool. So first we have this very fine sand that we just, um, you saw us filter in there for a while. I guess our reasoning is that like the big chunks, uh, the, the big rocks at the top can take out the big chunks. And as it gets cleaner towards the bottom, the finer sand will take more and more of the fine stuff out of the water. So there's our fine sand. And now we've got some fairly small grained rocks that we're going to put on top here. Oops, sorry, so you did. Okay. Do you think that's good? Yeah. And I think then we'll so. put some medium rocks on top of that. So these are our medium rocks here. <laughs> Maybe leave a bit of room at the top and can fill the whole thing up with water. Yeah, nice. Anyway, yeah, this is the dishwasher that dishwater that Sophie just got from our dishwasher. Uh, it came out of there, so it's a little, you can see it's really cloudy. You can't see through it. So we're gonna pour this into the top, and I think it's gonna be like yours. It's gonna be pretty slow, but. It'll take a while to filter, but we'll fill this guy up. And yeah, hopefully we'll get some clear water at the end there in a while. Oh, oh it's coming out it's already. It's totally coming out already. Hey, it's totally clear! Woo! <laughs> Look at it! Much better. The first part was like definitely a bit gross. Yeah. Yeah. Initial filtration, maybe. Yeah. But it's way clearer than the dishwater. Nice. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> there are high fives happening here, kids. Hi there, kids. So we were trying to think of a way to quantitatively decide how clean the water is that we filtered out. So all that means is instead of just looking at them and being able to say that two is cleaner than zero, uh, we want an actual number so that we can say how much cleaner it is. So we came up with this idea of creating a very basic spectrophotometer. And what a spectrophotometer does is, we've made ours right here, it shines a light and it'll shine it through a test tube full of a sample of one of the cleaned out waters that we have. And then over here, this side, is a photoresistor and what that does is it changes uh, its resistance based on how much light it's getting. So if a sample is very cloudy it means that all of the light won't be able to get through to it and so that'll mean that it'll register a much smaller number in terms of uh, in terms of how intense the light is. So very cloudy we'll get less intensity. Really clear we should get a good amount of intensity. So that's the idea behind it, um, and we will come back and show you it all working here in a minute. 
We have all of our three samples here. This one is a sample of just the dishwater before it was filtered through our filter. The number one uh, signifies that this was filtered once through our filter. And number two signifies that this water that was previously filtered got filtered again, and so it should theoretically be even cleaner. The DI water is deionized water, and it is very clean. It comes from a machine in the lab, and that's going to be our control. So when you have an experiment like this, you have to have a control so that you have something to base everything off of. In this case, the DI water, that's going to be our kind of uh, pinnacle for cleanliness. So that's going to be the cleanest water that we have, and everything else is going to be based around that. So you see that they each have their own little droppers, and that's to avoid any contamination with the other samples. So everything that was in here went into its own test tube via its own little dropper, so there's no contamination. And that goes for all of them. So what we're going to do now is we'll put these out of the way. And we'll start first with our deionized water, again, so that we have our base. What we're going to do is we're going to put it in our setup, and I'm going to cycle the colors through to be red, then green, then blue, then white, and then it's going to be dark. We'll get our measurements for all of those, and then we'll go to another sample. Now, when we put it in there, because we're measuring the light intensity, what we want to do is cover the whole thing up with this box. So once the tube goes in, We'll put the box over the top, and that will eliminate a whole lot of unnecessary light. Okay, so let's get started. Here's our DI water. I'm going to put it in there, and now we need to change the color to red. So I've got that all loaded up. And what this program does is it takes all of my code and transfers it onto this Arduino here. So you'll notice the light change colors, and that means that it's uploaded. So we're going to open up a monitor, which lets us see what the sensors are seeing. I'm going to put the box over the top, and there we go. So what we see right now is that when the red light is on, the photoresistor is seeing that. Alrighty, so now we're going to close this out and we're going to change this to green. Alrighty, we're going to upload it. That little bar tells us when it's done uploading, and then we can start up our serial monitor to see what the sensors are seeing. So this is the value that green is giving, 193. samples and we've got our table right here on the computer screen so what we did was we arranged the samples in order of cleanliness that we could see so the DI water was the clearest sample 2 was the one that was filtered twice so that was the next clear sample 1 was filtered once and that was um, the third clearest and sample 0 is what we got out of the dishwater so that one's the dirtiest and as you can see all of the numbers go up and as the numbers increase, that means that the photoresistor is getting less light. So that means that less light is getting through all of the sample of water. So you can see the red numbers go up by about one or two. So that's not really a lot. The green numbers start at 193 and go up to 225 with different jumps. So here it only jumped nine. Here it jumped seven. And here it jumped uh, 16. But the largest differences that we found were in the blue uh, light shining through it. And those gave us a much bigger range to work with so that we could see how each of the different filters was filtering it better or worse. So as you can see from the blue line here, 
This is the difference between sample one and sample zero. So the difference between regular old dishwater and the stuff that we filtered for the first time. And you can see that because the number for the sample that was filtered is lower, that it became cleaner and thus more light was able to pass through it. When we move from sample one to sample two, there's not that big of a difference anymore. It's fairly straight, so that means that it didn't clean it out too much more, only a little bit. And then the difference from sample two to the DI water was another pretty big jump, so that means that the DI water is much more clear than sample two is. So from this, we learned that if we want to test water samples in the future, we should definitely use the blue light because that gives us a wider range of values to work with, which gives us a better understanding of how clear things are becoming. So other than that, we built a really nifty little thing. And the great part about it is that it's really simple to use. I know that the circuit looks really complicated from here, but that's only because we wanted to have the computer be able to look at the data as well. So you guys could make something like this really similarly with just an LED, so that's the light bulb. And you would need a battery for the LED and some wires to hook it up. The photoresistor that um, is what measures how bright the light is on the other side is very inexpensive, less than a dollar. <laughs> and, um, and you can buy them online really easily. And you just need two wires uh, to hook up to that, and then something called an ohm meter, which um, measures the amount of resistance within the circuit. So that would be all you need to set this project up at home, and we could even send you the model that we use for our 3D printer. So I hope you guys really enjoyed the water treatment science that we did today, and thanks so much for sending us your idea. It worked out really well. Good job.